Hey guys, so in this video, we're going to learn about differentiation. Now, what do we mean by differentiation? Let's start by looking at an example of a function. Let's say that I have the function f of x is equal to x squared. And we can say y is equal to f of x. And let's look at the graph for y is equal to f of x. So here I have the graph for y is equal to f of x. In other words, I have a parabola here, the curve that has the equation y is equal to x squared. And the question I want to answer here is, what is the slope of the tangent to the curve at the point x comma f of x? What is the slope of the tangent to the curve at the point x comma f of x? So what we're doing here is, we're taking a point on the curve that has the x coordinate x, has the x coordinate x, and it has y coordinate y is equal to f of x. So we're taking a random point, a given point on this curve that has the x coordinate x and the y coordinate f of x, and we want to know what is the slope of the tangent to the curve at this point. Now in order to answer this question, let's take another point on this curve, and let's say that this point has the x coordinate x plus h, has the x coordinate x plus h, and therefore the y coordinate over here would be y is equal to f of x plus h. So now we have another point on this curve that has the coordinates x plus h comma f of x plus h. So what we have here is we have these two points. We have the point, we have the point x comma f of x, and we have the point x plus h comma f of x plus h. We have these two points. And let's draw a secant line between these two points. What is a secant line? A secant line is a line that intersects the curve at two or more points. So let's draw a secant line between these two points. That is the line that intersects the curve at these two points. And the question that I have over here is, what is the slope of the secant line? Well, the slope of the secant line is the change in y divided by the change in x. And here, we can take this point as x2, y2, and this point over here is x1, y1. So we can say over here that the change in y is f of x plus h minus f of x. And the change in x over here is x plus h minus x. So that's equal to h. Now here we can say that the slope is equal to f of x plus h is simply x plus h, the whole thing squared, minus f of x, so that's just x squared, divided by h. And therefore we can say that the slope is x squared plus 2hx plus h squared minus x squared divided by h. And what we see here is we have x squared and negative x squared eliminate each other. And we have 2hx plus h squared in the numerator and h in the denominator. So we can factor out h in the numerator, leaving us with the slope as m is equal to h times 2x plus h divided by h. And here again, we have h in the numerator and the denominator. So that leaves us with the slope as 2x plus h. So here we found the slope of the secant line. But our initial question was, what is the slope of the tangent to the curve at the point x comma f of x? Now if we turn our attention to the graph, we can see that h is the horizontal distance between the points x comma f of x and the point x plus h comma f of x plus h. Now what happens to the slope of the secant line as h decreases? What I'm saying is if the point on the right, the point on the right, as it moves closer to the point on the left, what happens to the slope of the secant line? As the point on the right moves closer to the point on the left, the slope of the line, the secant line connecting these two points approaches the slope of the tangent. What that means over here is, if you look at the horizontal distance between the, these two points, that's delta x, that's h over here. As that gets closer and closer to zero, as it approaches zero, it becomes smaller and smaller we can see that the slope of the line connecting these two points, that's the slope of the secant line, comes closer and closer to the slope of the tangent. It approaches the slope of the tangent as h approaches zero. So here, we know that 2x plus h is the slope of the secant line. We also saw that as h approaches zero, as h gets closer and closer to zero, as this horizontal distance h becomes smaller and smaller, the slope of the secant line approaches the slope of the tangent at the point x comma f of x. So we can say over here that the slope of the tangent is equal to 2x. Now this h approaching 0, this is what we mean, this is what is meant by the idea of a limit. Now the formal idea of a limit is not part of our syllabus, but the limit over here simply means that h is getting smaller and smaller, the horizontal distance is getting closer and closer to 0. 
but it never actually equals zero because we can't really divide by zero, right? If we divide by zero, we get an undefined value for the slope. So what we're saying over here is that since h gets so small, it's so small that we can essentially take it to be zero. We can assume that h is equal to zero. The slope of the secant line, that's 2x plus h, comes closer and closer to 2x. As h gets closer and closer to zero, we can say that 2x plus h comes closer and closer to 2x. And we know that as h gets smaller and smaller, the secant line essentially becomes the tangent to the curve at the point x comma f of x. So what we've done over here is that we found the slope of the tangent to the curve at a given point x comma f of x, and that slope is equal to 2x. This is known as the derivative. Here we use the notation f prime of x to represent the derivative of a function f of x with respect to x. And that is simply equal to the limit as delta x approaches zero of delta y divided by delta x. Now what that simply means over here is if you look at our example, delta x was equal to h, and as delta x approaches zero, as h approaches zero and it's almost equal to zero, we know that the slope delta y over delta x is the slope of the tangent to the curve or the gradient of the curve at a given point x comma f of x. And when delta x is very small and it's almost equal to zero, we use dx to represent delta x. And since dx, that's h over here, that's very small, we know that dy, delta y is also very, very small. So we use dy to represent delta y. So over here, dy over dx simply means the derivative of y with respect to x. And that again is the slope of the tangent to the curve y is equal to x squared, or the gradient of the curve y is equal to x squared at the point x comma f of x. So for our given example, we can say that the derivative of the function f with respect to x, that is f prime of x, is equal to the dy over dx, since y is equal to f of x, that's the derivative of y with respect to x, and that is equal to 2x. And here, this 2x represents the slope of the tangent to the curve or the gradient of the curve at a given point x comma f of x. So for example, if x was equal to negative 2, the slope of the tangent to the curve or the gradient of the curve at x is equal to negative 2 would be 2 times negative 2, which is negative 4. If x was equal to 0, the slope of the tangent, which would be a horizontal line, would be equal to 2 times 0, which is equal to 0. So the gradient of the curve at x is equal to 0 would be equal to 0. And over here, when we say instantaneous rate of change, instantaneous rate of change simply means the rate of change at a given instant or a given point. So when we say what is the rate of change of f of x with respect to x at a given point x comma f of x, we're simply talking about, again, the gradient of the curve or the slope of the tangent at that given point. Now the derivative can also be thought of as the limit of the gradients of a set of chords. Now that means over here is the following. If you look at this diagram over here, what we can see is that we have a chord that connects the point x comma f of x to this point over here. A chord is simply a line segment that connects two points on the curve. And when we say we want the limit of the gradients of a set of chords, what we're simply saying is we want the delta x between these two points to get very small. So what that means is we want to find the slope of the tangent to the curve at this point x comma f of x. And if we look at the gradient of the chord that connects these two points, if we move this point closer to the point x comma f of x, we see that the gradient of the chord is closer to the gradient of the tangent. We move it even closer, and again the gradient of the chord is even closer to the gradient of the tangent. And when the distance between the two points is negligible, when delta x is almost equal to zero, we can say that the gradient of the chord is equal to the gradient of the tangent at the point x comma f of x, or we can say that it's equal to the gradient of the curve at the point x comma f of x. So now, let's answer the initial question. What do we mean by differentiation? Well, differentiation can be defined as the process of finding the derivative of a function. So here, for example, if we were to say differentiate f of x with respect to x, that simply means find the derivative of f of x with respect to x. Similarly, if we were to say differentiate y with respect to f of x, that simply means find the derivative of y with respect to x.